So, Paul, this has been a weird week for me. Oh? Did you have to go to the store or something? <laughs> yes, actually. But, um, actually, last week, my wife went out to Illinois to visit our oldest two kids. Our oldest two kids mm. live in Illinois now, and she wanted to go out, spend some time with them for the weekend. And while she was there, she came down with COVID. Oh, no. Now, she got it here. She got it from her job. She's uh, currently a nanny for children, and just bad luck, mm -hmm. one of the kids got it. Now, she's been vaccinated. I've been vaccinated. Everybody involved has been vaccinated, but you, I guess you get it anyway, just not as bad. But so she traveled all the way to Illinois, gave it to our kids, and then, or gave it to our oldest, and then... They had to quarantine together. So she's stuck out there for two oh, weeks. Oh, no. So that was just, it was, it seems like terrible luck. You know, oh, this happens to happen right in the middle of a trip. So you get trapped halfway across the country. Yeah. But then we were thinking about it. And the real, the, the real danger is that I would get it because of my asthma. Right. Like that's the right. thing everybody's afraid of is that Seamus would get it. And so I didn't, she, she came home that night, you know, she contracted it on Thursday and then left on Friday and we didn't interact much that day. And so I didn't get it from her. And, well, uh, the symptoms haven't shown up yet. Right. Although I would be, it's been, uh, uh yeah, I guess it, it's still technically within the window. I suppose it's been nine days. So, well, let's hope it seems like, yeah. it seems like you should be able to, should be fine. If it was right. an exposure. It was a very light exposure. So I guess is the point. Right. Right. So, but she's quarantining halfway across the country now. So, I mean, halfway across the Illinois, it's not even, that's not halfway. That's barely a quarter of the way. <laughs> this is a big country. Anyway. So that's the stupid thing happening at my house is that Heather is gone. And, um, so yeah, I have to walk to the store every once we actually have a store close enough to walk to. It's very expensive, but you know, I had to walk and get groceries because <laughs> she has the car. <laughs> you can't take public transit. No, oh, there's no public. No, no, there's no public transit available out here. I mean, it would be, um, it, it would be miles to the nearest bus stop. <laughs> Ride your bike in the snow to the to bus right. stop and wait for a bus right. to go to Albertsons or whatever. <laughs> right. And then wait for out because, you know, the bus doesn't run that often because this isn't a high de population place. So it'd be like walk, you know, travel for a couple hours <laughs> or for a couple miles, then wait for an hour, then, you know, shop and then somehow log all your groceries back onto the bus and go home. Reverse the process. <laughs> that would be terrible. So I'm just walking oh, to a very dear. expensive store. I don't know. We're making it work. It's weird. It's weird. This is the longest Heather and I have been apart since we got married in 1997. Oh, wow. That's, oh, wow. I, I um, was apart from my wife for a little over a month when we were, I was working in Japan. And anyway, she headed home a month early because the passports worked out that way. But, um, yeah, that's a long time to be away. And you've been married for, what, 97? That's like 27 years? No, it's coming up on, I mean, it, we just hit our, in 2017 was our, our uh, 20th anniversary. Hmm. So we're like at 25 now. We're, we're coming up on 25. Wow. You haven't been apart for more than a fortnight. Right. Hmm. It's definitely weird. This is definitely weird. But, um, and, well, here's the thing. I, okay, <laughs> there's a certain degree of tension in our household because Heather, um, what's the most polite way to put this, likes to communicate a lot. Mm. She, she's a very, she likes to talk. It's part of her thinking process is to talk through problems. And, this is something she needs her husband to do. And if I am not willing to do that, I can't be her husband or I am a lousy husband. <laughs> but 
She needs what I would consider a lot of talking. I can go for days without talking to anybody. I know it's hard to believe because I filibuster you so hard on this show and dominate the conversation, but <laughs> if we were roommates, we would go for days without speaking. Um, so there's often this, you know, she comes in and interrupts my writing. And when she is gone for a while, like she'll leave for a weekend, like I thought she was going to do the, um, last weekend. When she's gone for a weekend, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get so much work done. And normally that's true. And this should have been a boon to my writing. Just like two solid weeks of absolute no interruptions. But I've been just so worried sick that I haven't, I've actually gotten nothing done. It's as if she's been in the doorway to the office talking for the entire two weeks. <laughs> just absolutely no ability to concentrate. Oh, no. And I probably... Yeah, I probably won't feel I, I won't feel right until she's home. It just I I'm just worried. <laughs> oh man. And, and then when she's home, she's gonna want to talk because of course she's out of all this pent up talking. <laughs> she's gonna want to talk. So then she is gonna stand in the door of the office and talk to me for three straight days. So I don't know what I'm gonna get any writing done. I think I'm just gonna like post random memes on my blog. Just Take stuff off of Reddit and post it on my blog and call it content. This is, that's where we're coming. There you to. go. Please tell me you have been more productive than that. Well, I, I have been doing some things, uh, but video game related, I tried out Albion Online, which is a very old video game. I was just about to say that sounds really familiar. Is it the one? No, they, yeah. th that's Asheron's Call. I can't remember which one Albion Online is. I think it's uh, was originally conceived as a like a spin-off from Ultima, right? Because Albion is the world that Ultima is set in, isn't it? Oh, okay. I think. Anyway, so it's this um, very old MMO that someone has kept running, and and I guess they make money somehow. Is this t uh, is this two D sprites or is this three D? No, it's three D. It's uh, it feels okay. kind of like just pre. World of Warcraft, like the original World of Warcraft level graphics. So lots of chunky polygons, uh, lots of textures. It doesn't have quite, of course, it doesn't have quite the um, stylistic cohesion that World of Warcraft did or does. All right. But, Dark Age of Camelot sort of level. Mm, yeah, yeah. It feels it feels kind yeah, of Dark Age yeah. of Camelot E. Although, so I I went into Albion Online, you know, created an account, and you have to you know, log in with your new account, and then you have to send your email address and confirm your email address and stuff, so they can send you advertisements. So fine. And uh, then I get into the character creator, and it's on a pirate ship for some reason. And there's like, oh, I guess because you're supposed to have like sailed over the sea, and it gave me very New World, uh, the, the video game like backstory vibes because there's like sailing across the ocean and you wreck on the shore and there's all these people in boats and so i was like hmm this is interesting it feels feels like someone cribbed from someone's notes here yeah so i'm i'm on this boat right and i'm doing character creation I'm and um i i'm like clicking you know the hairstyle button right to cycle through the hairstyles and see what kind of higher hairstyles there are and i'm noticing some input lag and i'm like oh that's that's kind of weird and then i look closely and the entire like boat or whatever it's all animated right there's like sails flapping in the breeze or whatever but the thing is running at like three fps and it's like it's not complex there's nothing cutting edge about this this is on a brand new right. computer i've got like a fine graphics card it's not cutting edge graphics card but it's like perfectly capable and it's just chugging and i was like this is very strange but i figured okay I'll just go in the options menu and see if there's something that's like messed up. So I go into the graphics thing and they've got, you know, like graphic settings and all turned up to ultra mode or whatever. So I start turning everything down just to see if it's going to make a difference. Um, and it doesn't do anything. And then I see that there is a FPS limit slider on, on the interface. So you can like limit the FPS of this like mid nineties video game for some reason. Right. But so like, why is it on three? <laughs> well, no, it's not though. It's on, it's on 60. 
And so I mess with the FPS limit. I turn it down, I turn it up, it doesn't make any difference. So I'm like, okay, well, so clearly something is limiting the FPS of this thing. Um, and maybe it's just in the character creator. Maybe so few people create new characters these days that the character creator is just broken and they just haven't fixed it because no one creates new characters. They're all, you know, an end game messing around with the hats or whatever. So I figure I, I'm going to give it the benefit of a doubt. I just like you know, randomize all my character traits or whatever and hit go and it loads and loads and loads. And it's like, man, this is taking really long to load. Like what is going on with this game? And then it loads in and I'm in the world and there's like, you know, a third person view, uh, you know, running around in this thing and it's still running at stinking like two or three FPS. The thing is just, just crawling. And so I, I uninstalled it and never looked back. Like if you can't make your video game run on a computer, what are you doing? And it's, they're not doing anything difficult. I have, I have no clue. So I, I figure I want to talk to you about this. Cause like, do you have any idea what might be causing that? It is really interesting that this has come up now. I actually have a video in the works. By in the works, I mean, I haven't even really started writing. I've just started research for it. Um, the, and I'm not sure this is going to pan out, but the, the idea, the concept for the video uh, comes from the recent Grand Theft Auto Online, or not online, uh, remastered, definitive edition. Mm -hmm. Some people talking about, you know, this 2000, this 2001 playstation game playstation 2 game mm -hmm. um the frame rate sucks like even on a modern machine <laughs> and the, you know your modern machine has so many times as much horsepower why why are we having these frame rate problems yeah and the my theory or thesis i have decided which it is my proposal for this that I that I would want to prove through my research is that the the period of time from like ninety eight to two thousand three was really transformative in how okay before that point processors just got faster and faster and faster you know Moore's law mm -hmm. and after that processors didn't budge I mean you know we would in the last. 20 years we've gone from 2 gigahertz to 3.5 basically that's not yeah. even doubling in speed and how we, all our power gains have been in multi-core um, parallelizing yeah right and if, so my my idea is that the stuff in those transfer that that those few years where we transferred from one kind of progress to another those games are sort of uniquely difficult to bring to the modern age games before that are you know they yes they were all designed for single core but they were designed for like you know a 50 megahertz processor or something right yeah yeah and so you throw it even if it runs on single core you've still got you know, a hundred times more power than it needs. But the stuff right there um, in that 98 to 2003 space is stuff that is where all of it is stuck on a single core. Your rendering, your physics, your sound, your gameplay, everything mm. on a single core. And so it can't take advantage of the resources on a modern machine oh and the other piece to this puzzle is the open gl back at the time where you would send discrete triangles one at a time you know um just sort of sort of throw individual triangles at the renderer and then after that period you would never do that you you take a whole block of triangles and you you know, packed together in memory, you put that on the graphic in the graphics card's memory, and then every frame you're just like, hey, remember that block of memory I gave you? Render that. Sure. Or run a run a fragment shader on it and then, you know, render right. their output or whatever. 
Right. So you're not sending it across the bus every time, and you don't have the CPU and GPU doing synchronous crap with each other. They can each go off on their own direction and do their own processing. <laughs> now, having said all of that, I cannot imagine why Albion in line struggles the way it does. Even if it's st <laughs> stuck on a single core, and even if it's doing software rendering, like, where could right? the where right? could the cycles possibly be going? I can't imagine. I am so baffled. And like, if it was always that slow, then why do they have an right. FPS limit checkbox? Right. If it was always that slow, then that means that back when the game came out, you were getting a frame every ten seconds. And I don't think the game would still be in business if that was the case. So I am baffled. That has, you know what? Um, it might be a timing problem where your processor is too fast and it's having trouble keeping track of the clock. Hmm. No, I still can't figure out how you could get the how you could get the frame rate that low. I can think of Yikes. things where I had old code that I would bring to a newer machine and um the code counted on the fact that oh since the last time I checked the yeah, I was getting I I had a program that would crash on a faster machine because it was like it would check the time in milliseconds, do a bunch of crap, then check the time again. And now it has a delta between the two. And then it would use that for some calculation. It would divide by that number, right? But on a really fast computer, all of that processing could happen within a single millisecond. And so it would be dividing by zero. So I don't know. I am utterly baffled why Albion Online could possibly be that slow. All right, we're talking about very old games. Let's go to the other end of the spectrum and talk about the newest of the new, the cutting edge stuff. Have you seen The Matrix Awakens? The movie? The game? What? I, there's so many Matrix things. There is, yeah, you're right. There's the, the new thing where the new Matrix movie that has Neil Patrick Harris in it. I don't know what that's about. I thought that was out, but I can't even remember any reviews on it. I don't know what the story is there, but no. Matrix Awakens is a demo for Unreal Engine. The the new version of Unreal Engine. And mm. it is really amazing. Um, I think it's, it's very promising and very terrifying. <laughs> um, well, it's a tech demo, right? So what they do is they recreate like the highway chase scenes from the Matrix movies. And they've got like virtual Carrie Ann Moss and virtual um, Keanu Reeves there looking like their younger selves. And it looks almost good enough to just be in the movies, but it's being run. It's being rendered real time on a PC. Huh? And the, the cars look absolutely fabulous. The cars look every bit as good as like the cars in the highway chase in Matrix Reloaded. So, um, so I'm watching a little bit of this in the background and I, I feel like this is one of those things where it's like, this is rendered in real time. And it's like those trailers, right? For Final Fantasy 14 or something where they're like, oh, this is part of the gameplay. It's this pre-rendered cutscene, but it's part of the gameplay. But apparently this really is. Yeah, there, this is live gameplay. You can download this if you have a con current gen console. You can download this and play it. Play in the sense of like playing a movie where you just watch it happen. Right. But on the other hand, as promising as these graphics are and is really neat, this is the first time in years I've been at all excited about actual graphical ability and not just art style. Um... But the problem is that this tech demo is like barely interactive. It is bar it is interactive in the sense that, you know, it's being rendered in real time, but it's just like you use your controller to snap between targets and then you press the fire button. So it's almost like a big long quick time event kind of thing. Like you don't control the camera is what I'm saying. So it's like a rail shooter 
that that's what it's like. It's like a rail shooter, you know, where the the simulation controls the camera and it fluidly goes from you know it you, when you blow the tires out of a car, it'll cut away to like the car rolling over and exploding, and then cut back to your character your view and it's very seamless so it does feel like you're taking part in a movie but the gameplay is so slight and my concern is that this is a harbinger of things to come that games will be getting less interactive it's so funny that the the video game industry is like oh we want to make games that are just like movies and they're finally getting there it's like okay but then like Where's the game part gone? Like, okay, so we've got all these great graphics and like you've turned it all into this amazing, like, it's almost like it's all pre-rendered now. If there's no interaction, then what's the point of it being in real time? Right. It's, it's just like the movies. You've got famous people, you've got amazing visuals, and you've got no interactivity. Congratulations. <laughs> you made it. Can we go home now? Right? Can we all go back to just playing Mega Man 1 now? Oh, man. Well, I mean, there are forces that really want us to be playing video games. Specifically, X-Pass Game Box or whatever it is. Right. The Xbox for PC. The Xbox for PC, Xbox on Windows, Xbox. Yeah. So I'm getting all these advertisements. I bought an AMD Ryzen processor for my new computer. And they're like, oh, because you bought this processor, now you have a free X Game Pass box ticket. You've won the golden ticket to go and play Halo Infinite or whatever when it comes out. And uh, I'm like, okay, uh, fine. So I muted the email and I was like, all right, when it comes out, let me know, right? Like, come back on December 8th. And so it came back and I was like, all right, I'm going to look at the fine print. Like, what does this require? And so like number one requires Xbox Game Pass on your computer. And this means that you have to have like Xbox Live service drop or the, the thing running. And I'm on Linux. Like, I, I don't know what to tell you. How do I do that? How do I run a Microsoft <laughs> thing on Linux? Right. Right. What you need so is Xbox for Windows for Linux. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I figured, I figured I'd try to figure that out. Um, so I was like, all right, well, never mind. And then like the next day, YouTube premium, which I subscribe to. So you don't have to watch ads on YouTube videos. Uh, sent me an email saying, oh, because you've got YouTube premium, you qualify for Xbox game pass and you could play Halo infinite. I was like, guys, <laughs> guys, you know what operating system I'm using. I, I don't know how to tell you this. Because you're already spying on my every move, but I'm on Linux. Like, you know that I'm on Linux. How, why are you telling me this? That's so silly. That is an odd thing. It just They just assume that everybody that subscribes to YouTube Premium is a gamer. I guess. Like, and, imagine and like, can you if... get Xbox Game Pass on Mac? Like, it's only on Windows, right? Right. You imagine if it was like, you subscribe to YouTube Premium. Here's a fishing pole. Like a real fishing pole. <laughs> Some fishing gear. You'd be like, I don't, this isn't my hobby. Well, that's how all non-gamers feel when you offer them an Xbox gaming pass. <laughs> like, wh <laughs> why are you giving me this? I don't even know what this is. I don't live by Disneyland. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was mysterious. So uh, I'm thinking about trying it. I, I I do have Windows computers that I could install it on now that YouTube is offering it to me because the AMD thing, the crazy thing was the AMD thing is linked to the processor. You have to like install this piece of Trojan horse software on your computer that like reads your CPU codes or something so they can verify that this is the exact computer for which you bought that processor. And like, I didn't install Windows on, on that one, guys. Sorry. But uh, now that YouTube is offering it to me, I might try it out just to see what the deal is and see if there's anything, see if there's any meat in those bones. Interesting. Well, this week I, um, I played a new game. It's been a while since I fired up a new game. I've been, you know, sort of doing my year end stuff and I've been like playing the last little bit of all the games that I've already played earlier in the year, getting screenshots and everything. 
but I was like really in the mood to play something new. So I played the new Guardians of the Galaxy game. Oh no, that weird one that looks like it, it was supposed to be all cool and looks like it's all like shovelware. This is what everybody says, and I don't blame you for that because I thought the exact same thing. I'm like, oh, this is a terrible thing from Sony. So what happened is Sony got the rights to do two different Marvel things. They got to do the Avengers game, and they got to do Guardians of the Galaxy. And the Avengers, they turned into a horrible, soulless, um, grind-a-thon, uh, live service look -alike. thing. It was all like hero look-alikes. Right. It, it didn't have its own identity. The writing was really flat and boring. Um, and it was just a big thing to push microtransactions. And so, of course, everybody just assumes, oh, the Guardians of the Galaxy is being put out by the same company. Well, it's going to be more of the same thing. But no, Guardians of the Galaxy is the exact opposite, is that this is a single player only. Um, Actual fishing hole online. and a boat in the middle of a lake. <laughs> right. No, it's a, it's. And it is unlike, it is not trying to like pretend to be part of the movies. This game is really leans hard into the source material. You will not mistake this for the Marvel versions of these characters. They have different origins, slightly different personalities, different costumes, different sort of dynamic within the group. Um, huh. Different voice actors, I assume. And different voice actors. And they're all pretty good. And it has a surprising amount of heart. You know, the writing actually is pretty darn good. It, it, hmm. Compared to most video game writing, this is friggin' amazing. <laughs> um, but it is also very much a modern AAA game. And so I, I forget that these games exist. And I think this is most video games. What I'm experiencing now is what the majority of games are like. <laughs> Oh, man. Go easy on it, Seamus. We have to live with video games. She's going to come back any minute. Right. Uh, this game is relentlessly linear. Like, it, you know, most games, it's like, okay, you do the tutorial area, and then it opens up. It's like the Mass Effect thing. Okay, you've got three locations, and you can visit them in any order. And then you go to the ending. Hmm. It's not much, but it's something. Or it goes hard in the other direction. It's just absolute open world, you know, like uh, all Ubisoft games and and uh, all Bethesda games. Yeah. But, I, you know, I can't remember the last time I played anything this linear. Probably the last time I played, like, a tentpole shooter. It's just, like, you do these levels. The... the locations are in a specific order and you can't mix you, you never get to decide where you're headed next the story just sends you like you're following the script and then the levels are mercilessly linear like the big <laughs> no. branching thing is that once in a while there'll be a side hallway that you can go down and get some secret item you know get some collectibles it's a secret it's like there's a door you want to go through it Maybe there's a secret. And the secret is, oh, this pile of stupid batteries that you use to do upgrades. <laughs> <laughs> Energizer shelf in the hardware store. Exactly. Exactly. It's like, if imagine if the original Doom was just one long hallway that just stretched on to infinity. And every once in a while, there would be a little side hallway that had... It, like a bullet pickup <laughs> like, <laughs> like an bullet. alcove with a single round of ammo <laughs> right right or one of those helmets that gave you one additional armor <laughs> right oh no or you're like why is this even in the game oh what? man and the quick time events are super off put just I hate them um, they are relentlessly just, they are the literal, they are the embodiment of press this button to not die. 
You know, like um, in the Tomb Raider games, you get a quick time event to kill the, you know, to execute a foe once you've battered them down enough. You get this little quick time event, and if you get it, boom, you kill them. If not, they kind of shove you away, and you just have to try again. It's not great. It breaks the flow of combat. But, all right, it, it's, it's, uh, it's inoffensive. But in Guardians of the Galaxy, you're like watching a cutscene and it's just you're watching a movie and all of a sudden, ah, press the button, press the button. Oh, you pressed it too soon. Never mind. I'm going to rewind it to the beginning of the scene. So, what? Yeah, it brings up a prompt X button. You're going to want to press the X button. And I stabbed the X button and it was like, no, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it shows you the button it wants you to press, but it's surrounded by like this red field and you have to wait for that to turn green. <laughs> what? And I'm like, that is just, and, and if you stab the button, you know, as soon as you see the prompt, like a good little primate, it's like, nope, that was too soon. And you just die. And then you sit there and you look at a blank screen for like five seconds while it loads and loads and loads. <laughs> while it reloads the video? Right! And then it starts the scene over, and you listen to the few lines of dialogue again. Wooden dialogue. Oh, no, this is, that's heart. Heartful dialogue. Right, but it's still. It's like, I just watched all of this. Why are you making me... <laughs> oh, I hate it so much. And the thing that I think is absolutely bonkers is... This is one of those games where it has one of those really complicated difficulty selectors. How much damage do you want to do? How often do your special abil special abilities go off? You know, how how much damage do you want to take? How much it gives you like I kid you not an entire page of things you can turn up or yeah, down yeah. to make the game harder or easier. How much bridge support easier. do you want in your shoes? Right. But there is no there is no control whatever that is just fuck off with these bullshit quick time events <laughs> it is the worst part of the Wouldn't game that be it, nice it's the worst thing that you could do it in the most recent spider-man you could just turn them off and it would just turn all these quick time events into just a weird stilted movie which whatever <laughs> that i'd be fine with that in guardians of the galaxy i would much rather that than these awful quick time events that make me watch the scene three times. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. I, I hate it so bad and you can't turn it off. And it makes me angry. So I mostly like the game, but it has it has the worst quick time events I've seen in a decade. Um, that's all I have to say about that game. I, I mean, I really just started playing it yesterday. So hmm, I don't have anything substantial to say on it yet. You, I'm you can't see the end of the one long corridor from here. <laughs> right. I don't even know, like, how far am I from the end of the game? Because it's just like, when, you know, we know, you have a sense of how long a movie it is. How long a movie is, right? You kind of yeah. feel, okay, movies are about two hours, and you can kind of feel the three-act structure rolling underneath it. Just after sure. you watch it, and in a, in a more non linear game, usually you've got a map, and you're like, oh, well, you know, I've been to one corner of the map, and then later on you've been to like another part of the map, and you're like, oh, I'm about halfway done. I've been to about half of the map. Oh, yeah, here's this big loca this location in the upper left corner of the map that hasn't been revealed yet. I'll bet you that's yeah, the yeah. end of the game land. The plague death lands with the mountain in the shape of a skull. That's probably where I'm going. <laughs> right. Right, I'll probably, I'll probably have to fight fight Darth Satan there. Um, <laughs> Some kind of giant spider or something. Right, but in this game, because it's linear, because there's no map, and because it's not a three-act structure, I've got no idea like how close or far or what the... It's just this... And because of the structure of Guardians of the Galaxy stories inherently, like in the comics, it's always... It's kind of like in Firefly, how the crew was... Or Cowboy Bebop. Hmm, sure. A little bit of a slice of life kind of thing. Right, there's... You never get to the point where they like... And finally, we got paid for the job and everything was great. 
it's always <laughs> right. sort of like bouncing from one disaster to the next and you've got like bounty hunters chasing you from stuff you did last week and you're trying to make a deal with the stuff people in front of you this week and this is causing problems that you'll know you'll have to deal with next week right and it's just this yeah. never ending failing forward which is fun i mean that's that's this genre of story <laughs> The plucky crew that can that is always just one step a, ahead of foreclosure, um, but so I have no idea. I I might be near the end of the game, or I could have hours and hours left. Well, I was gonna say we could hope that you'll be let out on good behavior, but with the way you're talking in this episode, I'm afraid that's unlikely. <laughs> I really there is a lot to like about this game. Also, it is so gorgeous. Again, we've jumped to the new console generation, so we've suddenly our PC games look better. Like, <laughs> consoles kind of set this ceiling on how good your games can look, right? Like, you get what the consoles get, but you can run it at a higher resolution. But now we've jumped to this new generation and we're seeing, you know, just more. There's more detail in the world. And it is pretty amazing. All right. Dear Diecast, once again, as inspired by Design Doc's coverage of the topic, I ask you, what do you think makes a great hub world in video games? And what makes a bad one? All the best, Andrew. Okay, here's the stupid thing about this. This one's a couple weeks old. We've been getting behind on these. And so I watched this a couple weeks ago. And now I don't remember the contents of it, but I will answer the the question posed by this email, even if I don't remember the accompanying video. What well, makes a good hub world? Um, I really enjoy hub worlds that feel like a home base. I like when you come back, like that's not always the case. Sometimes you have a hub world that is just a central locate like a city right in the metaphor of the game world you could think of it as the main city and you're traveling out into the wilderness even if you know the city is actually a planet or a space station and the wilderness is just other planets right but the, sure. the point being that you know when you come back to the hub world are you coming back to like some neutral place owned by other people like a space station that's just a public area or are you coming back to your home and i've always liked games where you come home between missions going all the way mm. back to the original kotor i used to love the ebon hawk it's just the most fantastic feels like a star wars spaceship but it's yeah. not really a hub world. That's just a location. You know, it, it's not a hub world. So maybe that doesn't really answer this question in spirit. Hmm. I was going to answer pretty much the same thing. Like the, the places that feel like they're small enough that you can really grasp them all at once. Like you could, you could see the whole thing at once with your mind, right? Yeah. Yeah, where you're not like... It doesn't feel like, um, like in an MMO when you go into the big city, like, you know, you go into, into Stormwind or Ironforge and it's like all the way over there is the bank. And then all the way over there is the crafting <laughs> crap that I want to use. And all the way over there is my trainer. It's like a good hub world is like a room with all that crap in it. <laughs> Here's my chest. Here's my, you know, Diablo games are good for this. It's like, okay, Diablo 2, I mean, not Diablo 3. Diablo 2, it's like, all right, this, the, keep, the storekeepers are all relatively close together. You don't have to travel more than a screen to see anybody. Your chest is not pretty close to whatever other interesting stuff you might need to do in town. I like that. I appreciate that. Super Mario Galaxy was pretty good. It's a tiny little, literally, world oh, hub world. It's not really a yeah. hub, but it's like, 
you know, it's like where you come back to between missions, I guess. A bad hub world is, yeah, I guess I've already covered that. Like, just spread out. It feels like the game world is wasting your time by making you traverse a large area and making also kind of making you load a lot of crap. Like, mm. yeah, it should be snappy and responsive. Right. Every time I want to just go back home, drop some items off in my chest, it's going to make me load in this huge city with these wandering NPCs that have no gameplay value. They just wander around in this giant open area that means nothing to me. <laughs> and look good for the footage for marketing. Exactly. Um, yeah. So that's what I think of Hope Worlds. Dear Diecast, I remember reading an older blog post of yours where you wrote about your experiences in the dot-com era where companies were trying to create things like virtual reality shopping malls and such, and how that was kind of a dumb idea for a whole bunch of reasons. I'm curious now what you think of Facebook's meta stuff and whether or not you think that history is just kind of repeating itself. I, I actually work as a 3D developer for a company that's tried to take advantage of the virtual reality brick and mortar store type idea. And that old blog post just plays on an endless loop in my head whenever I work on it. Zach. Thank you, Zach. So it is interesting that Facebook's new, like, are they renaming themselves or this new branch or this whatever it is that they're doing, they're naming it Meta. Because Active Worlds, which was originally called Alpha World, and Alpha World was based on the metaverse from the novel snow from, crash right and in that universe in there was a neil stephen there was neil stevenson's big breakout book there was a shared virtual world like this thing that everybody keep, keeps trying to create it was sort of like roblox meets the sims meets rust meets minecraft with the visuals of tron yeah yeah, that's just the entire universe was user-made content. And some of it, Neil Stevenson was right about, like, just people building dumb crap, giant freeform floating neighborhoods. Um, the detail he missed is that if you give power people that kind of power, you will end up with an alarming number of penises in your world. Just anything that can be made into a penis shaped will be made into a penis shape. People will stack things. Pe people are amazingly creative um, at creating that particular shape. <laughs> when aliens come and, ex and look at our civilization, they will think we worship dicks. Uh, I'm not going to get into whether or not we do that, but uh, that's the metaverse <laughs> right. idea. Right. But anyway, um, so it was called Metaverse in in the original novel, and then that inspired a whole bunch of things, including the company I worked for. And now Facebook is naming their thing Meta. So, yeah, it does. I think they really like are renaming coming. themselves. That's just weird. They should rename themselves back to The Facebook. <laughs> Go back the to the face they should off just, book, maybe. They should just go back to the original idea of rating college girls as hot or not. I mean, maybe that seems sort of like really crass and obnoxious, but <laughs> it would be a to what step up do, from here. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I think that would be a huge improvement on their current behavior, which is data harvesting the entire planet. Oh, interesting side note. Uh, I was looking at jobs because I'm job hunting still. And there was a job for Meta for, a, what was it? I forget the name of it, but they've got some sort of like robotic drone fiber optic cable dispenser program where they're just going to like spit a bunch of fiber optic cables all over the place instead of burying them in the ground because it's cheaper that way. Oh wow! This sounds like this sounds like a dystopian cyberpunk thing with just like you wake up in the morning and your neighborhood's just drenched with these just draped with fiber optics. Uh huh. 
you know, winds blowing and the robots have trouble, so it's just sort of like everywhere now. <laughs> it's like this giant spider web has fallen over the neighborhood. Right. Oh, the bots have been through again. Let me get the garden shears so I can get my car out. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, that's something to look forward to. Um, Yeah, it does. It, this virtual reality stuff is kind of like putting humans on Mars. It seems really cool, but there is no benefit to doing it. Like, there are no resources on Mars that we need. We can't dig up energy. There's nothing there that we need that we can bring back that would make us richer, which has driven all previous well, forms of exploration. Right. And, and like, if we did, if there was just piles of gold on Mars, like, it's still almost useless here. Like, how are you going to get it back? What? Right, how much right. effort is it going to take? Right. It would have to be, yeah, what, what could even be worth it? But the point is, like, there's no, we don't even have that. Like, if there was, like, giant solid pieces of titanium just laying around, you know, really rare stuff that is here precious on Earth, you could maybe imagine somehow that we would make space travel cheap enough to make it worth it to go all the way there and get it. But, oh, you're just going to go, you're just going to go there for the irradiated dirt and the cool factor. And <laughs> the metaverse is something similar. There's nothing to be gained. What do you get if you put everybody into a shared universe? Well, no, it'll be real cool. No, it'll actually be a giant griefing engine of, it will be Facebook, except now you can see everyone else. Like people ranting about conspiracy theories, people saying things that just drive you absolutely bonkers, giant offensive signs, people complaining about why are these offensive signs allowed to exist and why isn't somebody taking them down and covering up those signs with other signs that are offensive to a different group of people and people talking about why aren't there more rules for zoning so we don't end up with these giant walls of signs in front of other signs in front of other signs and we need to like have more moderators to sort all this out and settle disputes and why are there so many damn penises all over the place? Yeah, yeah. And don't forget the astroturfing and the malware and that blatant advertising. And the pornography. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's horrible. Like the <clears throat> If you give people the ability to build anything, that is what they will build. Pornography and... A giant penis-shaped brothel. <laughs> right. And, and giant, like, sort of totems to all the things that they hate in the world, whatever those things are. And in the virtual world, you can have them eternally burning in effigy. Right. And, it, it, and nothing would ever go away. That's the so other thing. Hell, you basically. If right. you give people the it, power, they will build themselves hell. Right. Like uh, active worlds, nobody tears anything down. Like somebody's like, I'm going to build the most awesome thing ever. And they just build this thing. And they had this dream that it was going to look like a crystal castle. And it just looks like a giant cube of glass. <laughs> and it's just an eyesore. It's just awful just this brutalist thing that brings your frame rate to a crawl and is impossible to navigate and is confusing and and takes forever to download and then they get halfway done they realize it sucks and they get tired of working on it so they just leave it there and now you have this horrible thing you know right there and so Maybe you build something nice. Maybe you're going to build an art gallery and you'll have like, re you know, links to real art on the walls. But then next door to you, somebody builds this huge brutalist cube that reaches the sky and looks stupid. And then they abandon it. So then people learn their lesson. Oh, wow. I can't leave any space on either side of me because otherwise somebody will build a giant like the equivalent in Minecraft would be the giant cube of cobblestone castle design. Mm -hmm. 
You don't want that. So you just claim all the land. And so then you end up people with people just claiming these massive, massive areas for themselves. And you, it doesn't look like a city. It just looks like this endless plain with occasional structures popping out of it. Yeah. And there are ways so around all these problems. Like there are gamers have solved all of these problems because gamers got a game, right? Like there's there are ways to address these things, but the way that that these companies, these huge megacorps go about things is just in such an, a naive, commercialistic, foolish way. You know that they're right. not gonna try any of that. They're just gonna do the most most straightforward thing to get people in front of their computers so that they can shove advertisements directly into their their retinal nerve. Exactly. And they're not, yeah, that's the other thing is people that do these projects never look at the failures of the past. The, the other thing I see popping up again and again is, in gaming is when somebody just sort of makes an open world and they're like, well, yeah, you can murder people, but you can also work together. And it, it's up to everybody if you want to cooperate or betray each other. And it'll be interesting. You'll have all this. And it's no, it's a giant murder <laughs> engine. It's a giant <laughs> murder engine. There are no Rust, consequences. Right. Rust is not famous for people f forming close, tight-knit family structures, uh, you know, and friendships. It's a betrayal engine and a griefing engine. And, like, that's what you end up if you build naively. You just end up with the worst, the dregs. Because... Nice people don't Are we talking about participate. Rust or Facebook now? Yes. Yeah, if you <clears throat> so you can um you can put hard rules in place, in which case the whole system is very controlled and curated and is not not organic at all. Or you let people build wild and they just build giant penises everywhere. And your dream of Oh, it's such a cool looking city. Your dream of a VR version of a city will never be built by people, but will never be just crowdsourced. It will not exist because people will not behave that way. So my no take on it for them to behave that way. Right. There, there's no, nobody's, everybody wants to make something interesting. And so it's almost it's not just that we don't all have the same vision for this city it's that if everybody did have the same vision for making a cool looking city it would immediately fly apart because well one person would say well i want to make the tallest i'm going to make a building that's literally 10 miles tall <clears throat> and somebody else is like i'm going to make a building that's made of solid light and somebody else is like i'm going to make a building that's a giant dick and all of these weird, different, divergent things will not go together. They will not form a cohesive whole. You can't, like, pull back, get a screenshot of the whole and go, wow, what an interesting structure. It will be a disorganized mess. And that and then is... they're arguing, no, you're a giant dick. <laughs> right. So that is the doomed... F that is the doomed outcome to any such endeavor i don't know about these virtual i don't know about these virtual stores i think it's a terrible thing but i don't know maybe there's maybe there's some way to make it work i can see value in wanting to examine an item before you buy it on amazon.com but i don't know if that's ever gonna like tri but i don't think there's any value in having a physical store to to navigate through to get to that item so yeah you could go on like sketchfab which is like a 3d model hosting site and there, you can just spin them around in your browser there's no need for like an entire immersive vr world in order to view 3d models online like and that might be a cool idea to have like you know some sort of easy to integrate 3d model thing in fact there are several companies that offer products like that um but Facebook doesn't want Facebook doesn't really want our dreams of a virtual reality universe to come true. They just want to latch their talons into that dream 
and drag us into their commercialized hell with them. I agree. I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> okay. <sighs> well, I wanted to do more of these questions, but I think we've got to put these off till next week. Thanks so much to everybody who sent in questions. If you've got a question for the show, our email is diecast at SeamusYoung.com. Thanks for listening, everybody. Say goodbye, Paul. I hope my ping isn't so bad that I can't do the outro.